Okay, hello feminine energy. Um, this is going to be really good. This is fun. So I just did the divine masculine energy, and I really recommend that you watch that whether you uh, believe that you connect to masculine energy or not, because it's within all of us, right? So it's not just for men, it's for everybody. Um, and I was talking about how I should probably just do these readings together, but for the sake of time, <laughs> I'm doing them separately. Oh no! This happened last time, didn't it? Okay, one second. I'll be back. Okay, so, sorry about that, um, I'm realizing I need to do a different setup, so just give me a minute, but I'm excited for this reading because the first thing that's coming to mind is recognizing, um, oh, well, patience, <laughs> yeah, patience, <laughs> being patient with yourself, and also recognizing that you don't, like, um, don't let yourself fall into the position of being of allowing like the energy of being a support system or being the supporter uh to make you feel like you are a sidekick right being a supporter does not mean being a sidekick um and it does not mean that you take the back seat in life it does not mean that you follow and uh, you follow where another person leads right the supportive energy is the foundation energy. It's the energy that feeds you, right? It's like the first meal that you have. It's what gives you everything that you need in order to go throughout your day. And what I'm getting with feminine energy right now is to recognize the way that you feed others, the way that you bring value into relationships, especially when it comes to abundance. Because the, the space that you provide, what you open up um, within somebody else, the space that you open for people to be vulnerable, for people to um, experience pleasure, for people to experience peace, that energy is extremely important in helping move the world forward and helping the world go round. You know, if we don't have any of that, we're not balanced and without it we don't have any ambition we don't have any drive to pursue what we need to do so if this is in terms of you understanding how to balance yourself out this is about bringing more honor and giving more um giving more gratitude to the feminine within you that gives you peace that gives you pleasure that feeds you you know, the, the what activities feed your spirit? What activities help you to go about your day and do the things that are kind of harder that you don't really want to do? What makes you, what inspires you? What ignites passion in your soul? What brings you, what gives you fire? You know, all of that is the feminine energy that needs to be honored and does not, and really importantly, should not be um, downplayed. You know, it's like really important right now i feel like i look naked i'm not naked i'm wearing a top um it feels very important to just see the feminine <laughs> see the feminine see the feminine it's so funny because if you watch the masculine energy reading it's kind of similar which i said it would be probably mirrors of each other and the funny thing though is particularly in this reading we have the empress out and the empress came out um before i was even recording for any of the readings but we had the empress out which uh, is the only card no the high priestess has just a woman too um and the wheel of fortune but the empress uh card is a solo card we didn't have any solo cards in the masculine energy reading that was all about acknowledging the need for both bringing harmony bringing balance not shying away from the feminine but in the feminine reading, there's like a particular focus on making sure that you see yourself. Uh, and if you're just a woman, it's like 
yeah, making sure that you see yourself, making sure that you honor what you bring to a space and don't dumb yourself down. Don't dim your light. Don't make yourself smaller than you are because you think that being feminine is being soft and malleable and delicate and fragile and quiet and meek and all of this bullshit. Um, meek in a way where it's, you know, kind of degrading. Not in a way where it's like, let me go in here at the earth. But, you know... <laughs> being humble does not mean not existing you know it doesn't mean not being confident and not acknowledging what it is that you bring to the table it also doesn't mean though feeling like you need to overcompensate or feeling like you need to uh to over exaggerate what you do or actually begin to lead more into masculine energies to um validate your feminine your feminine energy and the purpose that she provides bringing peace to a situation is purposeful purposeful enough bringing love bringing pleasure feeding somebody's spirit feeding somebody's stomach being the cook is purposeful enough that's enough to make it valid to make your existence valid to make you very important to make it important for you to be seen and to be honored and there is just this need to not look at the ways that you provide for others and see that as less than and um even if you are existing in the more submissive energy or in the more submissive position, it's important to not take that energy on as a whole to then make, to, you know, to then make yourself small, to shrink yourself. This is really, like with the Empress being here, it's just giving you need to stand in your power. And you need to acknowledge the full abundance that you bring to the table. Like, the Empress is a bad bitch. She doesn't need anyone else. She doesn't need anything else. It's all within her. She provides everything. And you have the snake here, which is so interesting because, you know, when you think of snakes, they're so um, interesting because they can shed their skin. They can move. Um, oh, I did have that in a dream. They can uh, move. Real, they're really agile. And uh, even without legs or without hands, they get around <laughs> and they also have quite a um quite a reputation attached to them you know one that can be seen as quite negative but I think they've got uh they're misconceived they're uh they it's a misinterpretation it's a misunderstanding um <laughs> but you're okay I'm gonna tell you about my dream because I feel like this applies so I had a dream last night my sister was walking and she ended up stepping on a slug and I was like, oh my God, the slug, the slug. And she stepped on it and crushed it. And I was like, oh, it's dead. And, but I didn't see any blood or anything. And it lifted itself. <laughs> the slug like split in half, lifted itself up over her foot and like continued on with, with its day. And it's like, even when you stepped on it and broke it apart, it was, it was still, it was able to be it was able to take on a new form and continue to exist. You know, like how worms can be sliced in half and like they'll still be fine. It was kind of like one of those situations. And it kind of made me feel like you, like it doesn't, it kind of made me think of your energy for this feminine energy reading. It doesn't matter how you slice it. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter how many pieces you exist within. If you're providing, you know, pieces and bits instead of rather a whole thing it doesn't matter if what you are providing is huge or feels huge or whether it's small it's enough it's more than enough it's abundant and it provides a positive foundation for everything else to work you know what I mean like you make everything else function properly and healthily and it's important to acknowledge that um, and not make that small is just really like what it seems to be talking about today really really acknowledging the power that you hold within your um, ability to also provide it's a different version of providing but it's really important it feeds the soul <laughs> you feed the soul uh, your feminine energy feeds the soul so if you're not in tune with it I would understand if you're feeling kind of depressed or uh, you know tired or uninspired because you need to honor the feminine you need to bring that energy into your life recognize what it gives to you and um and uplift it and cherish it you know like she's just it's such an abundant energy and it's just been so overlooked 
for the past few like generations on this planet that we're now at a place on the earth where like, you know it's all about trying to bring honor back and reestablish honor within the feminine because of how overlooked she's been so <laughs> ah. so this is not oh my god look king neptune is here at the back of the deck which is funny because king neptune came out as the card as the final card for the masculine energy reading but here king neptune is again oh where did the card go give me one second <laughs> the visionary card came out but then it just disappeared <laughs> Okay, so, visionary card, Imhotep. I think that's funny that that came out, especially because I think that in terms of where we are right now in the world, it's the, uh, it's the feminine that's leading the vision forward. She's leading the path forward, right? She's the one taking the steps and telling us where to go next because right now it's all about being led by your heart. It's about being led by your dreams and your fantasies and... Um, your emotions and not using so much of the logical mind because we're not living in a logical state you know the world is <laughs> low-key dying which is okay because death comes with rebirth right but we're going through climate change we're, there's recessions there's wars nothing about our existence is logical right now and so right it seems like in this moment it's kind of about embracing um, the delusion <laughs> of the feminine and allowing that to lead you forward and honoring um, uh, the legitimacy of that, right? Because I think a lot of times, especially, I mean, this is just funny because it's just generally what happens to women in general, uh, being marked off as delusional and as insane and as all of these things that are really just tapping into a different realm of existence. And now, as this whole world is going through awakening and everybody's ascending and whatever, now we're seeing the importance of acknowledging the intangible. Now we're seeing the importance of acknowledging what's elusive, what's, uh, what's not really there, you know, but is there. Uh, just the different ways that we can exist, the different states of a physical existence, you know, how complex the physical really is, how complex the non-physical really is. Um, it's interesting that we have Hathor and Hald and... Um, Tell the truth and soul family. First, for some reason, I feel like the, the letter H is important. Um, maybe somebody's name begins with an H or I don't know. But um, we have tell the truth and soul family and visionary. It's interesting because these two cards are unexpected for me. I wasn't expecting, like I'm looking at them and I'm trying to read them, but um it's not instantly coming to mind because I just, you know, <laughs> it's one of those moments where I'm like, oh, what is, like, what does this mean? <laughs> Why these cards? Visionary even kind of shocked me when it came out. But with that one, I can kind of understand. Um, visionary is also about uh, following your dreams and realizing that you are bringing something to the table that is completely new um, and something that is completely creative. And just like I told the masculine, in the masculine energy, I'm going to say this to you, there's not one way to be feminine. There's not one, ex uh, there's not one way that you exist is feminine energy. It's so complex, right? Because the universe is feminine energy. Is the universe simple to you? Does the universe exist in one way to you? Absolutely not. We don't even understand the universe. Um, so yeah, there's no one way to exist within your femininity. And even on this spread, we have so many different examples of feminine energy just to show you that it's so complex and that there's many ways for you to be and you can switch it up and feel comfortable doing that. And all of that is truthful to you. Soul family. Okay, this also feels like with the soul family Hathor and Hod, Hod, uh, tell the truth this also feels like um making sure you're honoring your experience within your relationships making sure that you want to be there 
you know what I mean like I if you're if you're a people pleaser or if you if you have people pleasing tendencies if you grew up that way and if you're working your way out of it now um, or you struggle with boundaries it's very easy to fall into relationships it's very easy to fall into friendships and into jobs into communities uh, that you don't actually have any drive to be a part of that your soul doesn't have any link to because you're empathetic and because you're able to connect with people because you see them because you're a human being and you recognize humanity within everybody and you um, recognize the importance of community and the importance of intimate connections and so you just kind of fall into them but your relationships are not favors to people you don't get into connections with people as a favor to them you know it's not cool first of all to like uh, to be with somebody out of pity and that is what it is um, and it's not cool to you and it's not cool to them and it reinforces this idea that you don't deserve genuine connections that you need to give yourself away to everybody because the feminine energy is just um, uh, super super giving right but energy but the feminine energy actually in terms of giving and receiving represents receiving you should be receiving energy into your life that aligns with your soul and I feel like when it comes to feminine energy with masculine energy I was talking a lot about following your heart and following your desires and your emotions with feminine energy because you can exist so easily within the heart space within the fe within the emotional space I think it's actually more important to follow your soul to follow your intuition right? to actually be more logical that's where you can balance out your feminine energy. You need to be a little bit more logical. Um, and by logic, I mean following the soul. Um, listening to what your soul wants. And sometimes your soul can be a little bit more harsh, a little bit more cutthroat, a little bit more um, unaccepting or unwilling to receive all of this energy if it's just kind of like hoarding energy or if it's energy that doesn't serve you, if it's energy that doesn't give anything back to you. And I feel like there's a need for honesty when it comes to looking at your relationship, relationships, and this is friendships too, romantic friendships, platonic, yeah, platonic, uh, like business relationships, all of the different uh, relationships that exist in your life and dynamics that exist in your life. This could even go past people and also extend into like thought patterns, you know, um, and perspectives and whatever. But it's talking about kind of looking at everything that exists in your life in a dynamic and seeing whether it actually aligns with your soul. And, in, and when it aligns with your soul, it aligns with your truth. But in order to know that, you need to know what your truth is. Who are you? You know, who are you beyond just being a feminine being? You know, that's not your entire existence. And the, di the divine feminine is actually marked by darkness. So it's marked by this kind of emptiness, by this unknown. Uh, there's not a simple answer to who you are. And so it cannot be defined simply by being soft and being about pleasure and being about peace. You know, it's a lot more complicated than that. It's like mother energy. Mothers are not just nurturing, you know, caring beings. Mothers can be brutal. Mothers will be cutthroat. You know, a mama bear will kill your ass and nobody wants to be near uh, mothers when they're around their cubs, right? Around their kids. It's like, they're insane. <laughs> and that's because the feminine energy is very complex and it can take it to a lot of different levels. Um, because it's doing what's best for herself, which is best for her kids, which is best for whatever, whatever, whatever. But it's very important that you center your truth. You center your soul into your heart. It's like, for you, it's really important that you're connected. You're connecting the crown chakra to the heart chakra and not just existing from your heart because um, it doesn't provide well-roundedness and you need the balance. And that is it where I think your masculine energy would end up coming in and being very helpful is helping you to um, provide the balance. Yeah. But like, we're not just giving creatures, right? Like you need to um, create balance for yourself. Okay, hold on. You're not just giving. You also need to receive. And you also need to have people in your life that give you what you want. You know, you could have people in your life that give to you. What is it what you want? 
Are you just taking whatever someone's willing to give? Or are you taking what you want? What do you actually desire? What do you need? What, needs, what do you need to fill your cup? Uh, are there any more messages for the feminine energy? For the divine feminine? Sacred medicine. Ask Galapagos. <laughs> Ask Leopold. Oh, Hecate. Past life healing. And you know where this comes from? Because I was talking about in masculine energy how it's completely. Oh, here we have Atlantis, and before we had Lemuria coming through. Atlantis was actually more so guided by masculine energy. So that's funny. And there we have Merlin, cosmic knowledge. Yeah. In the other reading, I was talking about how it's not, it's understandable why we have all these constructs around femininity and masculinity because patriarchy has existed longer than any of us alive on this planet have existed in this life, at least in this incarnation, right? So the healing that needs to come from that is generations deep because it's also ancestral. So it's, it would make sense that you wouldn't be able to do that alone. It also makes sense that you are not the only healer, right? Like we always position women as the healers and we are healers but masculine energy is healing too masculine energy is empowering too masculine energy is liberating too and it's okay to receive healing and medicine and rejuvenation and new life um, from allowing masculine energy into your world to provide a new perspective or a new way of being or a new understanding right like we need it all we need all of it sacred medicine what heals you and you can do it all alone but it doesn't mean you have to you know because that's a lonely life and we don't want to be lonely we want to be fulfilled so I think that that is kind of it I want to see if there's just one more card from this tarot of sexual magic and if not, then we'll let it go and be ready to go. Any more messages for the, for the feminine energy within us all, for the divine feminine as a collective? Any more messages? Any way the wind blows. Uh, have you seen, um, uh, have you seen, what's it called? Hades Town. Anyway, the wind blows. I would listen to that song. Because she's like one of those, she's a woman who has to do it all on her own and kind of untrusting of the man. <laughs> but sometimes we need that. And it's like, it's okay to acknowledge that you need someone um, who's going to love on you, you know? And maybe your representation of like, don't feel like I was saying this to the masculine too uh, about not existing in a relationship in a specific kind of way not feeling like you have to but it's okay if the person who is you know madly in love with you or really passionate really romantic if the stereotypical um, uh, representation of like what a good guy is or what kind of man you should have isn't doing it for you it's okay if you need to go outside the box right it's okay if you need to be with something else. Uh, but don't be... It's so funny. I think I was telling the masculine that we need to be more delusional. Maybe I was saying it here. But like, yes, more delusional. But for you, it's like... You don't need to be as delusional because you're naturally delusional. So in order to be... Being delusional on top of that would cancel it out. You need to be a little bit more logical and trust yourself and where logic comes in it's really just a matter of trusting yourself that's how you can be logical you can be logical by just following your instincts by just following your gut by not questioning yourself and obsessing over how you're supposed to be what it looks like to be um to be romantic to be passionate to be dedicated or to be a lover it should flow naturally it should be something that exists easily um without even having to be spoken. And you should not feel guilt over um, over who you choose as your lover. 
right? If they're the right person for you, it shouldn't be something that is guilt-ridden. It should be, um, and if somebody is around and making you feel like you need to choose them, that's not the right person for you. But you do need to be honest about that, right? And not hide it from other people. Tell the truth. Be honest about who you want to be with, what, what, what kind of person you want to be with. Don't just take anybody's love that's willing to offer it because that's a jerk thing to do. It's mean to men. Um, if you're in a heterosexual relationship, it's mean to your partner either way. Uh, to the partners that are trying to pursue you either way and it ends up creating that same unhealthy toxic uh, imbalance within the feminine and the masculine that we're all complaining about these days right you need to be honest do you want to be with this person or not if you don't then why are you with them why are you with them because you're going to end up gaining a bunch of trauma that you don't want And then in the end, you're going to be upset about it. But you already knew from the very beginning that you didn't want to be with them because you know instantly. I, like, I know instantly whether it's going to work with somebody. Instantly. The the minute I meet them, I know. Literally the minute we meet. Like, the second we meet, I know. You just know. Then you start to question. Then all these things come in around, oh, well, am I judging too harsh? You know. You know, and we're getting to the point where everybody's already talking about trust your fucking instincts. The first red flag is the one that you should take and never turn back, right? Like, we already know trusting ourselves will always lead us down the right path. So there's not really, there's no more excuse. It's very important that you take responsibility for your own knowing, for your own intuition. If you want to be seen as this intuitive goddess, the goddess doesn't allow random lovers into her life and just she doesn't just be with anybody because she's so giving and she's so abundant or because she just really wants love like no she's choosy (laughs) you have the right to be choosy uh, but make a choice and make it clearly because leading people on and strength stringing people along is not healthy feminine energy that's toxic and that creates um insecurities within other people it creates trauma in other people that you're responsible for and no you're not responsible for healing it because nobody can heal anybody else uh, in that way you know the other person has to make the first steps and really be committed to it but um don't bring unnecessary trauma into other people's life right because you can't make a choice or because you feel insecure about your ability to choose why do you feel like you don't know how to be decisive why do you feel like you don't know what your gut is saying when you clearly do why do you feel like what your gut is saying is not the truth or why do you feel like it's not enough you know these are the questions you need to be asking but there is a healing around decisiveness needing to be more decision oriented hey mom okay well that's the reading bye